In today's video we will be planting a flag on Duna and drive a little bit of rover and lander and we'll go through all the phases from the initial design, building, including some very intense moment when launching, leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence and enjoying the beautiful serene arrival at Duna together with some best ascent music ever. Yes, all that and a lot more. By the way, guys, this video will be quite a long one. It will be roughly 40 minutes, but I will put in the comments below the chapter so you can look. So this is the first part. We are designing a rover, the rover that will be going on Duna. And here, as you can tell, I'm really enjoying the blueprint mode where you can actually, you know, just press an individual and boil the, your craft to the 2D level, where you can actually now look at from the top down, from the side, from the left, from the right. It gives you a good perspective when you need to align things. Yes, so we are right now doing the rover body. We have put the controls and now I'm thinking of putting small octagonal struts and that was before I, know, I knew that they were bugged to the death. But yes, even the bugged struts and small oct octagonal cubic struts won't prevent us from fulfilling our mission and landing the rover on the surface of Duna for all shenanigans. Also, we need to power this rover, so I figured we attach two solar panels. Look at those, they should essentially look like wings and hopefully they won't interfere with Jeb's head. Alright, that being said, let's put another set of buggy items, which are the rover wheels. Yes, those are beautiful. They have steering enabled. You can do a lot of things with those, but most of things what they do, they wobble like crazy. As on ascent and on descent and everywhere in between. Yes. Alright, so my I have chosen my color scheme to be sporty orange with a black stripe because I thought I'd do you know the justices of the old Ford Mustangs of old but um, well I didn't see it work too well all in all batteries are on communications is on and now we need to be placing some more lights because well what is rover without lights there wouldn't be any point now would be there all right so let's put two lights in the mirror symmetry and some rear lights that will be flashing or actually just red and uh, I think that actually concludes the rover. Let's put Jebediah in this driver's seat and test it from the runway. Mini rover. All right. Yeah, it looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty proud of, proud of that design all until the time when I actually test it. And look, it is tilted slightly forward and if you try to drive it, it does look a little bit buggy and you can perform wheelies. But I was kind of hopeful that the patch would deploy and that it would fix all of my problems as we do today in KSP. However, that didn't happen. Now, let's do this thing. We are going to construct a lander that will be deploying this rover. By the way, guys, the lander I have opted since I took me roughly, I think, around six, seven hours in trying to find an SSTO that could deploy it on the surface of Duna. But um, those, well, you saw some pictures of how that went. They were extremely buggy, so I wasn't able to do that. So I decided to go with a regular just lander. I mean, you got to work with, with what you have. I don't want to complain too much. It works, and this design will help us to get to Duna. Right, so what I now want to calculate is a total amount I will need to land this on Duna, deploy the rover, drive a little bit, and then go back. Yes, uh, the back mission, by the way, will not be shown in this episode. It'll probably be shown in a follow-up episode if everything goes well with this one. So, lander. It will, so, I'm actually constructing a rather a beefy lander that contains fewer parts than vice versa because, well, those tend to be a little bit sturdy and apparently game likes them more for whatever reason. Right, so... I'm trying to keep my part count low and... Uh, oh, Doke. Let's put these actually at an angle and I'm going to put this forward. All right, so this lander will have four landing legs. Oh, it looks like a spider, doesn't it? Let's look like some sort of a bug. Pun intended. All right, so let's see. Uh, what do we do? We want to put two solar panels that will be powering the lander itself. Then we want to put some shoots, and those shoots were the main shoots. And then I want to be putting some drogue shoots. 
Oh, the rocks, those rocks should could do very well if we place them on top. Uh, there's even a small RCS tank that we need to think about. Oh, that doesn't look really nice, does it? And besides, I will need somewhere actually the decoupler port. Yeah. Or sorry, not the decoupler, the uh, docking port. All right, let's just put here these... Uh, let's put here those guys. The RCS vents. Yes, that's the word. I can talk, apparently. And uh, right now, it's time to join them together. I really do like build side-by-side -side activity in Kerbal Space Program 2. So now we attach decoupler and we'll use small octagonal strut to put there. Oh, if I only knew. <laughs> yes. All right. So uh, below that, I actually need some leg room or space for this to breathe. So I'm actually going to be putting, where is it? The engine plate. Is it in the pods? No. Fuel? No. Engines? No. Engine mount. Yes, that's the word. All right. There we go. So then we want to be shrink shrinking the length. So now I put the fairing below. And look at this. Amazing. Right? It works as intended. Yes. So let's put in the smaller length. I'm just, and after some fiddling, I realized I might need a decoupler even. Who knows? Let's put, so let's put a decoupler. If I ever want to ascend, I don't want this engine plate to be at the bottom of the craft. So I really want to ditch it the moment that this little lander decides to go back up from the Duna atmosphere, up, up and away, all the way to, yeah, Duna orbit. So now I'm trying to calculate how much exactly well, I need to get up and so I decided, oh, well, I don't need these parachutes and I would like this to be sort of an Apollo lander ticking off also the weekly challenge from what was it last week or the week before. So in the end, I decided to put in the docking port and who knows, maybe we'll just connect the lander to the fuel stage, at least to refuel. Right. Okay, so that's the lander and the rover. Now we need to decide the or we need to actually design the transfer stage. And in order to design the transfer stage, I need to figure out how much Delta V I would actually need for that bugger. Because, well, uh, as you can see, the launch pad here won't actually tell me how much Delta V I will have because it messes up in terms of staging. When you use launch plates, it gets actually get hard to calculate things. So rather than doing that, let me just select a fuel tank. And then if I put on an engine, I want to be understanding how much can I actually get to orbit. Okay, so I need to know, can I transfer this separately? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build myself a mass simulator. Devs, if you're looking at this, the next procedural part should be a mass simulator. A tiny cubicle that you put on top and you can, you know, procedurally change the weight of it. That would be amazing. That would actually prevent me from doing all kind of stupid shenanigans with these tanks, where I'm actually trying to make those tanks empty. And there is a second reason for it. I cannot use the full tanks because it would calculate the fuel. So it would increase my delta V. So I just want to use dumb mass. And for that, I'm using empty fuel tanks that weigh approximately 30 something tons. And as that is the same amount as the lander is weighing. So I'm using that to calculate how much delta V and how much thrust to weight at liftoff or actually at the transfer do I have. So using that mass simulator, as I'm trying to refer to an empty tanks, it's nothing more than that. I'm actually now trying to figure out how much stuff do I need to put to be able to get a safe transfer to Duna and also to get into the Kerbin orbit and all that jazz. So with that thing being said, okay, I think this is 3,324 is enough for the transfer. So now we need to design a launch or ascent vehicle, if you will. So let's just move everything above. And now I'm going to be looking for... This is the decoupler we have, and now transitioning. Now, if I put two large tanks and I've put on the Mastodon engine at the bottom, that should actually, what, what does that give me in thrust of weight? 1.097. Oh, that's not nearly enough. 
1.097. I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with that. Uh, let's do the bigger one. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna up you one and let's do the XL. So let me just find the correct adapter. There we go, adapter, XL Tara large tank. And let's see, if I place now, I know by the way, if I put an engine plate, I can put multiple engines. So now let me see if I place, once again, I'm gonna be doing the mammoth. However, Mammoth has 0.74 now. So if I sink it in a little bit and attach a lot of vectors, that should do the trick. So let's try. Fairing enable, independent throttle. Okay, advanced controls. How do I sink you in, Sunny? Yeah, I could do vectors. So if I do, once again, Mammoth. And now let's sink it in. I just need to... What did I just do just now? Yeah, sink it in, son. All right, now sink it in. There we go. And after we sink it in, I place a metric crap ton of vectors around it, and that should give us an enough oomph to get above. So let's see, these six vectors need to be, but they need to be set on the same stage, of course. That was kind of like the whole purpose of things. So, okay vectors and we need them in the same stage there we go so how much that's 1.8 thrust to weight well that's good that's enough what i need however it's and it's 4026 meters per second so i just need stability here so i've put in the two you know reaction wheels units and then let's put like these four wings i need the big ones and then we're going to be placing like four boosters. So now let's go into the final assembly. We're going to be placing the lander here. And then after beneath that, we're going to put this entire rocket. There you go. We're going to get rid of this dumb mass simulator. And uh, that gives us a 9609. And this is actually a mod stage info, which I'm using. So I just want to correct my staging trying to figure out how much above sea level thrust to weight, how much delta V we have, what's the burn time and whatnot. And after all that stuff, I'm thinking I need to basically put all of these vacuum engines in the same stage. Hold on. Uh, these four need to be grouped together. These are the four Duna lander engines and then I need to be taking the away the rest of the staging. Okay, yeah, fairing needs to go separate Parachutes need to go separate and I think this is good stack. However, this doesn't give me a very big vote of confidence in terms of you know Delta V So what do you do in Kerbal Space Program? Of course you do first strut things So to make sure that everything is correctly strutted. Yes, then you strut another set and after strutting, you decide that you want to put some Clydesdale boosters. And here, when I was copying those, I have probably made one of the cardinal sins that is will be invoking Kraken at the later stage. Yes, like I said, this video took me roughly 22 hours recording, bug fixing, and then some editing. So yeah, that's why KSP2 videos don't come as often as I would like them to. However, now let's go into the fun part, coloring stuff. So I was thinking for the lander, I wanna go with, let's say with a Swedish theme, Swedish color. So, you know, blue and yellow. Although the blue might have not been the best one. Then on the transfer stage, I'm gonna go batshit crazy. So I'm gonna use green and pink and then I'm thinking for the Ascent stage, let's do the Croatian theme. So I'm going to go uh, with white and red. There we go. I actually like this. So I'm going to save and let's try and launch this sucker. So you have probably seen the short and this was me, you know, go very proud, launching the rocket, enjoying it and it starts to wobble and you can she see the sheer utter terror after four hours of building the craft, how it looked. I didn't want to be dissuaded and I loaded the craft again, but it loaded yeah, a different color scheme. And uh, so I decided I'm going to redo these parts. So I'm going to go with the same color scheme again. And also at the bottom, I realized that the Clydesdale boosters are actually quite buggy. So instead of those, I have decided to go with the bigger tanks and with the four mammoth engines, because I thought those would be a little bit more stable. The thing is, 
with the Clydesdale boosters, you cannot control your thrust to weight on ascent. It is what it is. And if it gets too high, the rocket tends to either wobble or flip itself upside down without your input or your control or even your saying in, in the matter. So I have decided I want to be able to throttle all of my engines up and down. And that means that this will need to have a different color scheme. So I have opted for this horribly ugly orange with the turquoise. Yes. I mean, the craft has to be ab absolutely absurd. Otherwise, what would be the fun in launching it? Right. So, I'm not trusting the readout. I'm trusting my gut. Because that has failed me always. And this time, I'm showing you a little bit accelerated. Sorry for that. I'm using, the, by the way, the Micro Engineer. And I'm going to go straight up for a long time. Because history shows whenever I try to do a little bit of, you know, to the right, to the left, things go very, very south, and I want them to go east. Yes, so, by the way, sorry for a little bit of, you know, loud music and accelerated. Those will be fixed in the previous, in the, in the future videos. By the way, I'm doing, working on a side puzzle that will hopefully allow you guys to enjoy a lot of KSP2's music. We'll see. There will be a snippet of it in the when we get to, to Duna. So, there we go. Look at the beautiful ascent and look at the pop. The top has popped. Apparently, those fairings are not the best solution and uh, you know, the lander tends to wobble and I was got really worried that the mission will be, you know, a scrub. So, after I've dumped the boosters, I realized, okay, my apoapsis is now at 80. I should probably start tilting, you know, because until now I've been going straight up. Yeah, that's not the best way to launch a rocket, because whatever goes up must come down. However, all in all, this rocket seemed to be quite stable, which, much to my surprise, was a good thing. All right. Yeah, there you go. By the way, I really love the KSP2 soundtrack, and by the time we get to Duna and on re-entry, I have experienced one of the best moments in gaming. Seriously. The soundtrack and the sound design is amazing. Uh, says he while he's plotting the maneuver node and yapping all of a sudden. All right, so the burn will be starting in 30-ish seconds, and it will be 1913 meters per second. By the way, guys, I managed to succeed this without infinite fuel, a Kraken, or whatnot. So this one mission is 100% kosher, all until the end of the video. There we go, look at this beautiful craft going onwards. However, I did get a lot of wobble, so once I ditched the fairing, look how my wheels were jumping and the cubic octagonal struts were giving me a really hard time. However, that doesn't matter. So after some circularization efforts and really hard, because if you look my apoapsis and periapsis, you will notice that I probably don't know how to fly rockets and that's okay. Now, yeah, <laughs> sounds a little bit weird, but okay. So periapsis, we have crossed the periapsis. So I've now just made sure that I have circularized to a good extent. And then let's set target to moon because I do want to fix my orbital inclination before I eject to Duna. Yes, All right. I mean, apoapsis and periapsis, well, those will need to be resolved eventually. By the way, for your convenience, I did cut out just, you know, accelerating time until I get to maneuver node, accelerating until I get to. But all the maneuver nodes and all the fiddlage, as you guys have requested in the poll, which I have posted yesterday. Yes, so you said that you wanted to see all the maneuver fiddlage and what, what and whatnot. So, there we go. This rocket does sound a little bit alien because it seems to be like held by magnetic forces of the rover. Yes, and probably it is. And look how it's dancing. <laughs> oh, it's just crazy. Normal, if, if this was KSP-1, I would have used the truss structure and this would have worked correct. Okay, so let's now focus on Duna, set it to target, and we need to plan our ejection node. By the way, I figured out a very, very simple solution how to do, you know, the interplanetary transfers. And there's a guide for you. Or actually, it's not a guide, but if you watch here, you will see. Now, what I'm doing, I'm just putting off enough delta V to eject myself out of the Kerbin sphere of influence. 
so where, then I will reduce it so that it's a really, really minimum amount that I can burn just to get out of Kerbin's Sphere of Influence. And once I burn it, I will treat it as any other moon transfer rather than Hochman or Interplanetary and all that stuff. No. I just get out of the Kerbin Sphere of Influence and then I plan from this orbit until the Duna. Same as I would do from Kerbin to Moon. So basically what I did, I took down a complex problem and made it into a simple one. I hope you can relate. Alright, so the burn is 721 meters per second and I'm really bothered that this burn timer doesn't show you how much is the remaining delta V rather than required delta V, but alright. I have uh, enough there. So, there you go. Now we will be ejecting around Kerbin, finally. Now let's a little bit time accelerate and I'll let you guys enjoy and watch this beautiful craft colored completely appropriately going all the way out of the Kerbin Sphere of Influence. And after some, you know, perspective switch, switching to Celestial View, there we go. Look at it, beautiful. Oh, and yeah, sorry, those are a couple of screenshot firing up. There we go, beautiful, and and we have finally exited the Kerbin Sphere of Influence, which means let's book a transfer to Duna. So now we have an ascending and descending node is 0.1, so that's kind of good. Now let's see if we can intercept Duna. So as you can see, we have the 1A and 1B. 1A is where we will be, 1B is where Duna will be, and those two need to meet. So now I'm just moving my you know, uh, my maneuver node along, along the path until I actually get an encounter. 1A and 1B are close if I move them slightly. And there we go. We have a Duna periapsis of 33,000 kilometers. Guys, that's good enough for me. Let's go there and let's perform that maneuver node burn. And it's an 891 meters per second. So let's do it. It will be happening in 20 seconds. For your convenience, I have cut out the four minutes that it took me to, you know, transfer to the part where I would be doing the burn. Two, one, and go. All right, look at it go up. There we go. Beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna here create another maneuver node and that maneuver node is just before entering the Duna Sphere of Influence, just to make sure that our entrance around Duna will be good enough. So now let's see, we are crossing Duna's entry and exit. I actually don't know where entry and exit are, interestingly enough. Okay, let's uh, put like this, then we're gonna do a little bit of prograde and touch it by a little bit of normal oh is it ah, i get it now when now it's only now in post-production that i see what one is entry and what is exit entry is going outwards and exit is going inwards the concentric circles or at least it seems to me like that maybe i'm wrong okay now let's see, what do we do? We actually put this so it's almost equatorial. What I'm missing here is the periapsis. I would really like to see the periapsis, what is being shown here in the picture as we would normally do in KSP1. Yeah, that's just something that I really feel is missing, but hopefully the devs will edit in the next patch. And once we are coming closer, there we go certainly seems like it okay so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna do a burn 153 meters just to correct this and almost almost there we go okay that looks good enough to me the next correction we're gonna do once we are in duna sphere of influence so as i said yes entrance will be the one that's concentric circles going inwards and we are finally at Duna. And we do have a Tylo, oh sorry, Tylo, hike, flyby. Yeah, Tylo flyby in Duna system would really be weird. Sorry, I've just recorded some music for Tylo, so yeah. All right. 
love the Duna music. Duna music, Duna themes is one of my favorites in KSP2, honestly. Both the Duna music when you're in orbit, which is this one, and when you're entering the atmosphere. I think it's one of the best work the composer of KSP2 has ever done. I mean, it's really amazing. Okay, so 19 minutes per second, let's decelerate and then we're gonna do a small correction burn. All right, let me just burn radial outwards, point maneuver prograde. The burn will be in 10 seconds roughly and it will be 19 meters per second. So it's really, really a small, tiny correction. There we go. And time for us to actually enjoy the Duna arrival. I'm slowly gonna accelerate time. And look at Ike, how it dances all over the place. Ain't it beautiful? Ain't it glorious? All right, there you go. Look at it go. Amazing. I did a couple of screenshots there and look, cubic octagonal struts. I wonder where those are coming from. Yeah, you would never know. All right, arriving at Duna and then we will be picking our landing site and hopefully getting onto the surface and planting that flag. Yeah, all right, radial outwards. Let's see if we can take a picture. By the way, my periapsis is 30 kilometers above Duna and that actually worries me a little bit because I feel I don't want to aerobrake brake at all. I would much rather have, you know, going at 60 kilometer and then I have enough delta V, that's plenty of delta V to decelerate, so I figured might as well actually do it. All right. Devs, please fix the F12. I don't want an aero debug on the F12. It messes up my screenshots. Right, the maneuver node burn will be coming in three minutes and 20 seconds. There we go. And look how crazily my wheels are wobbling. That's just nuts. Yep. Yeah. All right. I am getting ready. I should be extending this because once we decouple from the bottom stage, the bottom stage will stay in the orbit as a tanker. I want it to refuel. So once the lander comes back, it will refuel with whatever fuel is left in this stage. So that is why I actually brought this big antenna so I could, wouldn't lose the craft once I get into the Duna's atmosphere and whatnot. All right. So. Oh, I think I hit the gas a little bit too much. I've noticed that my periapsis has dropped to 47. Okay, well, no way of changing it now, but okay. Hang tight. We will scrape the atmosphere around Duna, but that's fine. I'm gonna shut off my solar panels. There is no heating. By the way, this music I love. You will hear it in more details once we actually get to another point. I'm just going to be creating another maneuver node just to make sure that to put our uh, periapsis above uh, the atmosphere. I don't want us, you know, to be uh, decelerating. And after fixing that, I have decided to just point maneuver prograde. This was a tiny burn, which I have now aligned for and I should be doing quite soon. So just a tiny burn that gets the periapsis to 65 by 60 or 68 by 68. And that was my goal to actually create a stable orbit for the tanker vessel because I have still some Delta V 447 Delta V. It's not really that much for the entire craft, but if you count that I will only need it for the lander whom I will be docking to everything, then it will be hopefully be okie doke. Now, with that thing being said, now 
what we're gonna do, we are gonna decouple the lander and we will be taking it down to the surface of Duna. Look at it, how beautiful it looks. I just want to turn it so that I have a better view of it. There we go, quickly checking my staging, that my staging is a-okay. Alright, everything seems to be alright. Now let's see, resource manager. I want to check that my tank is full. Yeah, my tank on the lander is full, the other two. So what do you know, the devs actually fixed the problem of leaky thingies. I know that they said, but I've never tried it until now. Alright. So I think it's time to hit that decoupler and... Go to Duna! What do you think, guys? Alright, let's do this. And... Okay, disconnected. Enabling the RCS thrusters, just to get us slightly away from the tank. There we go. And time to do the landing, shall we? I'm gonna actually now prepare my chutes and uh, prepare everything for the landing. The chute tires I want to deploy as high as possible whenever it's safe for them and here I mean both the drag and the drogue chutes and I want to make sure that I have also armed them so that I don't do anything by accident. So let's arm the chutes, arm the drogue chutes and the legs. I don't want auto suspension, guys. I've tried auto suspensions, it didn't work well. So what I'm gonna do, I will be placing it like that. And now let's get to the Duna. We're gonna time warp until we get to the shady side because I want to be landing on the sunny side. So we're gonna go to the shady side and then we're gonna be performing the deorbit burn. Setting the periapsis of roughly 27-28 kilometers because the air resistance should in theory do the rest. There is no heating so I'm not worried that these rovers wheels or anything will explode. So that's the reason why I'm not using the heat shield. Alright and uh, there you go. 29 kilometers. So now the next order of business is getting this thing down and guys I, during the descent, for a better part, I'm gonna actually shut up and let you guys enjoy this beautiful music and the beautiful score because I really think it's something special. Yeah, and also our fuel tanker has bugged out, but we will be correcting that later on in the future episode. For the time being, guys, just enjoy. I'll come back to you in a minute uh, or a little bit more so.
Ain't it beautiful? Ain't it glorious? The only way to enjoy this is with your music pumped to max and just appreciate the score. I thought this was amazing and honestly this was one of the finest musical soundtracks that I've enjoyed in the gaming to date, so I really wanted to get you guys to enjoy that as well. Alright, the parachutes as you can tell have deployed and so have the landing legs, which really give this like a sort of you know, like spidery look and feel. It really feels momentous, a voyager descending on the new world for the first time. Alright, so we have all in all eight parachutes in total, four main ones, four drogue chutes, and we are 1800 meters above ground. Yeah, you gotta really hand it to them, the soundtrack is amazing. So now let's focus on the descent. This is a little bit accelerated, I didn't want to accelerate it too much, so sorry for a little bit of the twitchiness, and I'm looking for the shadow. So once we actually, when we land down, we should be deploying the rover and planting that flag. So let's see if that manages to hold all the bugginess because the rover is the most bugged out part in KSP2 at the moment that I have ever put. So let's see if it holds on. All right. Oh, there's a shadow. And uh, I'm actually holding a steady surface descent 30 meters per second, so I'm just now cranking up the gas. My target velocity should be roughly between 5 and 2 meters per second for an ideal descent. I do have a limited amount of fuel, so I don't want to waste all of it, so I'm just very carefully and very slowly burning towards the ground and at the last moment I will be increasing there we go you have to land very very gently because if we land too hard we're gonna squish the rover and if we land too softly well we might just flow away and tip over so this is really a tricky landing to pull off surface velocity 2 I'm just now barely regulating the throttle to ensure a nice and smooth touchdown. There we go, a little bit. Tango Delta, we have touchdown and apparently we have almost squished the rover, but we didn't fully. Whew. It only took me 21 attempts to do this successfully. Yes. Extending the Gigantor solar panels and look at this beautiful rover. I mean, this is amazing. This is going into my history books as one of the most beautiful things I've done in the KSP to date. The rover even agrees. Look how it nice. It, it shivers, literally. Not due to the thing that thing, the thing is bugged to no oblivion, but the fact that it's just so excited. Yeah. A little bit of sarcasm there, but, but what can you do? All right, so now I'm gonna increase the spring strength because I do want to raise this lander a little bit. And as you can see, the Jeb has snuck and he has been flying on this damn rover the whole time. Oh, and hope you don't have a headache, buddy. Apparently he was bumping his head. So the, all the things that you have been seeing so far, oh, look at this. It really feels like a bug. And by that I don't mean the programming bug, I mean like a real bug. This whole lander looks like a real beetle, if you want to say so. Hey Jeb, how are you doing buddy? Look at this. He's so happy that he's finally driving and he doesn't dare to push pedal to the metal because, <laughs> well, he'll just bug and fall out. He's just now looking, oh right, I have finally arrived. Oh look at this. Let's extend, oh no, it's blocked. Let's extend the solar panel. Oh, there is no cubic octagonal strut. You don't say. Well, I just wish I had used some other parts to construct it. However, all in all, looks good. He's happy. Now, what we should really do and plant the flag. But I thought our pilot, the jour, Valentina, she has been real champ all the way till now. She has managed to steer this craft away from Kraken and towards Duna. So it's only fair that she would be like the first Kerbel on the surface of Duna to plant the flag for all Kerbal kind. There we go. 
Do not conquered. We rock. Indeed we do. Pulling the flag out of her ass and immediately, you know, planting it. Beautiful. So guys, there you have it. Hope you liked the today's adventure and there will be more and just stick around to the channel and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you very much for watching. This is Groundworks signing off.